All right, Mr. Donnelly, um, this is part of a leadership series is board perspectives. And uh, I want to ask you this question. Board members, as you would know, you know they, they should be valued uh, leaders. They should be contributors. How do you view from your experiences what's the quote unquote right fit on boards, um, especially with respect to uh, diversity, not just diversity of, of black, white women, men, etc., but diversity of skill sets and industry? Well, uh, first of all, I think the more diverse in the maximum number of aspects is a good thing. But I sit on several boards, and what I find is you do need subject matter experts. So, in, in other words, uh, you know, I sit on some technology startup boards. And although I have a software company, I wouldn't consider myself a, a technology expert. We need subject matter experts on the board. But similarly, I think you need non-subject matter experts to bring a different perspective. So the subject matter expert versus not would be a, a diversity I, I would look for. And then you have to have a certain aspect of independence. And I don't mean just in compliance, you know, if they're a public company or something, but you will get in, in even startups, uh, board members that are very close to the CEO, and that's good. I think the CEO needs some representation on the board, but you need a, a, a strong presence of in, independent board members. I think the third thing I'd say is uh, having sitting on several boards where VCs are present, these guys are absolutely ruthless. They're not afraid to say things, ask things. I mean, I just sit there. Frankly, I learn from these VC placed board members. Uh, very, very impressive. So I would recommend you bring kind of a VC type board member in. I really think committees are important on board. Right. Um, you know, you like I'm, I'm, I'm usually put on the audit committee because I'm a CPA or compensation committee. But uh, these things, the, the C's and especially the CEO, they want some guidance. Uh, they're about busy to run in their business and, and, yeah. and, and for, for someone to be able to come to them and give them some some um, guidance on major decisions they have to make, they they like that. And then I, I would also say, though, Mark, if you have unengaged board members, get them off your board. There's no, it's, a total, it's a waste of a seat. You need engaged, connected uh, board members or they shouldn't be on there. And, and I would say the final one is age. You know, we, we, we've just got so many distinct generational categories going on right now, and they're all assets. To have all gray hair or all kids uh, or all in the middle is is crazy. I mean, we all bring a different perspective. So I would think those, in addition to the obvious normal diversity discussions, I would say are super important for a powerful board. A powerful board can make, make the difference. Yeah, totally. And I, I think you're so right on. We do a number of board searches. We also have a board advisory practice coaching people how to prepare to get on boards. And uh, to me, it's way more exciting on top of that to have all these diversity and young and older and this and that, you know. Um, and the other thing we, we focus on a lot, as you said, is if you're going to be on a board, you know, it's not a volunteer, but it's somewhat similar to volunteering. Um, it's not like, well, I don't feel like it today. You're, if you're committing, you're committing and let's do it for real. You know, and and at the same time, management's got to be able to get you the, the information well in advance so you can you can do it. But uh, great, great points, and I um I appreciate it very much. Thanks.